Hello, my name is Bob. Welcome to a short stop on pool. If you enjoy my videos, be sure to like and subscribe. Click the bell to be notified about new content and leave a comment or a suggestion for content you'd like to see. I am sure the tangent line has been discussed online already. This video is just my opinion on one particular aspect of it. In my how to aim video, I said, the cue ball always travels along the tangent line after leaving the object ball without exception. Really? Without exception? Are you sure? And on a related note, also some teach that inside English can help you draw the ball more sharply, myself included. Is that true or is it a myth? And how does the tangent line factor in? Let's find out. First, a quick refresher. The tangent line is a vector 90 degrees from the shot line to the opposite side of the cue ball's approach. I will repeat the same shot while striking the cue ball along the vertical axis in the center, low, and high, and at four different speeds for each location. The object ball is the 10 ball located on the foot spot with the stripe always pointed towards the pocket. The cue ball for every shot starts on this spot, and I will use the 9 ball for a cue ball with the stripe oriented perpendicular to the aim line so we can see its rotation. We will track the cue ball's travels in slow motion. While this experiment is fairly objective and controlled, I have to stress that it is not a real scientific experiment for the following reasons. First, as careful as I try, I may not be striking the cue ball in the exact same location for shots of varying speeds. Second, there is no control for speed of shot other than my own personal sense of speed control. Though I will show the time of cue ball travel to the object ball to help estimate the relative force applied for each shot. And third, the object ball might enter a different part of the pocket from shot to shot, changing the expected tangent line slightly. And finally, a real scientific experiment might perform each shot 10 or more times to obtain an average result, whereas I only shot each one once or twice and then moved on to the next shot. But I think the results are consistent enough to draw some valid conclusions, so let's get started. First is a center ball shot. The white lines indicate the aim line, the shot line, and the 90 degree tangent line. At the bottom of the screen is a timer. To the left of the semicolons is seconds, and to the right is sixtieths of a second. These slow motion shots are one eighth normal speed. This first shot is struck softly, and notice that the path of the cue ball is the same color as the speed. The cue ball took 1 and 23 sixtieths of a second to travel from its starting point to the rail. Watch again and notice that the cue ball does have a bit of forward rotation as it leaves the cue tip. A very softly struck cue ball will not be able to slide all the way to the object ball without picking up some forward rotation due to friction with the cloth. We can see that the cue ball traveled along the tangent line for a very short distance before curving forward and then again traveling in a straight line to the rail. Let's watch the next three shots as the cue ball is hit with a medium, hard, and very firm stroke. Notice that the relative time of cue ball to object ball indicates that I was able to vary the speed of the shot somewhat consistently. Each shot did exhibit a very slight amount of forward cue ball rotation on the way to the object ball, which I believe is the reason for the change in direction of each cue ball. But that change in direction happened only after the cue ball traveled some distance along the tangent line. If I'm right, we should see a similar effect with a more pronounced change in direction for the shots that are struck with a high cue ball. The soft, medium, and hard shots all seem to follow the pattern, but what happened with the firm stroke? If you look closely, the object ball is struck a little bit thickly, 
and that moves the tangent line a little above the white predicted path. But in all cases, the cue ball travels in a straight line along the tangent line for a distance relative to the speed at which it was struck before the friction of the forward rotation of the cue ball changes the direction. And then the cue ball continues to travel in a straight line in that new direction. Okay, so what do you think is going to happen when I apply a draw stroke to the cue ball? Let's find out. We can see that all four speed of shots traveled straight down the tangent line. Then the soft and medium shots curved away due to the backspin on the cue ball. I find it interesting that the shot struck with medium speed curved for a longer distance and actually crossed the path of the softly struck ball. I'm not sure why this is, but my guess is that I struck the cue ball lower on that particular shot, and so the cue ball had more backspin. What I find even more interesting is that the hard and firmly struck draw shots show almost no curvature or change in direction. But I have a theory about that too. Watch this power draw shot by Judd Trump on a 12-foot snooker table. The cue ball travels directly down the tangent line for a short distance. The extreme rotation of the cue ball begins to change the direction slightly. The directional momentum of the cue ball is reduced and finally overwhelmed by the spin on the cue ball and its friction on the cloth, causing a significant curve in the path of the cue ball. finally resulting in a new straight line direction for the cue ball. The heavier cue ball and smaller table in our example means that the cue ball ran out of room before that curvature could happen. So, does the cue ball always follow the tangent line immediately upon leaving the object ball? The answer is yes. Okay, let's take a look at the second question. Can you draw the cue ball more sharply with inside English? Here we have a slight angle cut shot, and I'm going to draw the ball, first cueing in in the center, then with right English, and then with left English. Let's watch the shots at half speed before we slow them down and follow the path of the cue ball. I found it kind of funny how the object ball hitting the back of the pocket caused my camera tripod to vibrate, but the table isn't moving at all. And let's watch again at 1 8 speed. Each of these shots was struck softly so that the cue ball stopped about center table. As you can see, every one of them traveled for a short distance along the tangent line before the backspin on the cue ball caused a change in direction. The shot that was struck with right English drew most sharply, and that's presumably because the right English allowed for a fuller hit on the object ball, resulting in less momentum along the tangent line for the spin to overcome. For this reason, the shot struck with left English had no chance of drawing back at a sharper angle. But before we come to a conclusion, let's repeat this experiment again, and I'm gonna strike each shot hard enough to draw the cue ball all the way to the headrail of the table. 
Here are the three shots, first at half speed and then one eighth speed. In my opinion, the evidence is clear and consistent with the experiments so far. The cue ball travels in a straight line along the tangent line. Then the backspin fights the momentum, causing a curving path, after which the cue ball continues to travel in a straight line in the new direction. And I am forced to conclude that drawing the cue ball more sharply with inside English is in fact a myth. For any of you who are still doubting my point about the tangent line, here's an example from a college level physics course where they use advanced mathematics to determine the angles at which two pool balls will depart a collision. This is an example of an elastic collision, meaning the pool balls do not compress so there's no net loss of energy. It is also a glancing collision, meaning the red ball does not hit the blue ball full on. For this example, they're assuming a 30 degree angle between the red ball's initial direction and the blue ball's direction after impact. By coincidence, this is equivalent to a cue ball making a half ball hit on the object ball. Anyway, in order to calculate angle B, they go through a lot of complicated math and the answer is 60 degrees. 60 degrees plus 30 degrees equals 90 degrees our right angle tangent line. No matter what angle the cue ball approaches the object ball, the angle between the object ball's direction and the cue ball's direction after the collision will always be 90 degrees. Physics explains that this is true because the mass of both balls is identical. Hopefully this video has shed some light on the opposing forces. that determine how the cue ball will move, and that will help you as you practice playing position.